Okay, welcome to the Pioneer Mountains of Central Idaho, one of the most spectacular mountain ranges we have in all of Idaho. Also home to one of the peaks over 12,000 feet. This is Hindeman or Hindeman Peak uh, up here way off in the distance. Um, <clears throat> just a spectacular landscape. And I wanna spend some time <clears throat> with this video um, explaining the Pioneer Mountains as best I can. It's kind of a complicated story, uh, but I think we can um, distill it down to the most important points and really explain this unique mountain range here. So the Pioneer Mountains are <clears throat> have a pretty unique history. Um, the rocks here record two stages of being deformed. So if we go back to the Cretaceous period, the time of the dinosaurs, uh, maybe you know 100 to maybe 70 or so million years ago that was a time when North, western north america was being compressed in an east-west direction there was a subduction zone on the coast of north of western north america an ocean plate was diving beneath the continent uh, and at that time this part of the continent was being squished east to west it was being shortened and that produced mountains it also folded the rocks and did some other things that event is called the severe orogeny i've talked about it in some of my other videos as well <clears throat> so the severe orogeny is this very well known um, mountain building event in the cretaceous in western north america so if you can imagine during an event like that when we're squishing the rocks together we're thickening the crust um, rocks are being folded and eventually what can happen is at some point the compression between those colliding plates starts to wane a little bit. And so once the subduction zone ceased to be to exist essentially, the plate boundary along the west coast started to change. We don't need to go into that in too much detail. But the whole point is that the compression was starting to end. And what happened was that all that compression had piled up these rocks, made the crust a lot thicker, but without the compression from the colliding plates there, those high mountains started to gravitationally somewhat collapse under their own weight. Now, there were other factors as work as well, but what we have, uh, and I'm gonna go to a, a diagram here that I think shows this nicely. This is from uh, a publication <clears throat> from Jim Vogel from the University of Florida. Um, what we have in the Western US, so here is, uh, if you can't see this that well, here is uh, the West Coast. Um, and this is sort of the Intermountain West here. And these blue blobs, I apologize this doesn't show up as well as it might otherwise. <clears throat> these blue blobs are these locations of these things called metamorphic core complexes. And the, <clears throat> the Pioneer Mountains is one of these. It sits right here. Let me grab a pen so I can point the, to these things a little bit better. So we can see that there's the Snake Range in... Um, uh, East Central Nevada. There's the the Rubies uh, outside of Elko. This is the uh, Albion Raft River um, Grouse Creek area along the Idaho Utah border. Then we have the Pioneers. Then there's a bunch of these that also go up into northern Idaho, Montana, and into Canada. And again, these are called metamorphic core complexes. And so a metamorphic core complex. And I have another diagram I'll show here in a second. It's probably best described as <clears throat> a place where there's been large magnitude extension. So the rocks have been stretched, in this case, in a more or less east-west direction. So imagine one event piling the crust up, squishing rocks together, but then when the compression is gone, those rocks actually start to move outwards or extensionally stretching away from each other. And here in the Pioneer Mountains, we have one of these core complexes. Why is it called a metamorphic core complex? Well, the extension along the, uh, the faults, the faults are very low angle. And so those faults drag the younger rocks that are on top off of the rocks below, which are much older. And I'm gonna switch to my diagram, which I think will show this a little bit better. Um, and so what we have here, is um so this is a cross section from the southwest to the northeast um right now i am near hindman peak so i'm i'm right here more or less but hindman peaks above me 
And then as you go to the east over the Pioneers, it drops down into uh, the Wild Horse Creek area uh, in, that, right, in that area. So what we have here are two faults, two low angle normal faults. So these rocks here, these Paleozoic sedimentary rocks, which are largely un undeformed, have actually slid down off of the overlying rocks. They've basically moved, in this case, in the southwest direction as the extension was going on. So as this area was being stretched in an east-west direction, these rocks were actually transported down. <clears throat> At the same time as we stretch the crust and make the crust thinner, that causes the rocks on the interior to rise upward and form a dome. And so what that's done is it's brought up these very old Precambrian gneisses, Precambrian metamorphic rocks, high-grade metamorphic rocks uh, that should be and for well they did form miles beneath the Earth's surface 2.6 billion years ago. 2.6 GA is billions of years ago. Um, so if we go over the ridge, uh, which we're not doing today, into the Wild Horse Creek drainage, the rocks there are some of the oldest rocks we see in. Uh, all of Idaho, in fact, uh, these very ancient Archean uh, Precambrian 2.6 billion year old uh, metamorphic rocks. Um, <clears throat> there's the, the story gets a little bit more complicated here. So the younger rocks have slid off the side. The older rocks have risen in the middle to form the core, the metamorphic core, hence the name metamorphic core complex. But here we actually have another fault. So there's another fault shown here. And so there's not just the upper rocks, what we call the upper plate, and the lower rocks, what we call the lower plate, the really old rocks, but there's actually a section of rocks in the middle. We call that the middle plate. So it's a package of rocks bounded by this uh, low angle normal fault, what we call detachment fault, and this one as well that kind of comes across here. These rocks in the middle plate are um, older Paleozoic rocks, but they've been metamorphosed. So they were once upon a time sandstones and shales and limestones, uh, but now they've been more metamorphosed into marbles, lar largely marbles and quartzites. Um, they are in places um, beautifully folded, and we're not sure if the folding was an earlier uh, deformation that occurred during the severe orogeny, or if it was something that happened when this stretching took place. This all took place in the Eocene around 50-ish million years ago. So all this metamorphic core complex development and the stretching of these rocks took place about 50 million years ago. So we've got our upper plate, undeformed sedimentary rocks that slid off the top. Some metamorphic rocks um, that were once sedimentary rocks that are kind of caught up in the middle of these two faults here. This is what we call the middle plate. <clears throat> and then we have our metamorphic rocks in the core. We also have, because we took, uh, we thinned the Earth's crust considerably, we have rocks or magmas that have been generated uh, that have moved up nearly parallel to these faults to form these intrusive rocks here. So these would be things like granites and diorites. These formed at about the, the time the extension did. And these form this package of rocks uh, that we see in this region here. Um, so hopefully the diagram helps a little bit with the overview. <clears throat> I want to show you a few of these rocks then uh, up close and personal. So right here behind us we have some of these uh, marbles that, and they're kind of dirty marbles. These aren't the nicest ones I've ever seen. But uh, if you put acid on them, you can see that they bubble and fizz. Um, they react, so they, they contain a lot of calcite. Um, so that's a, that's a partially um, a recrystallized calcite. So there's some marble in there. Um, <clears throat> what's nice about this big slope here, coming off Hindman Peak, is there's lots of different rock types that have kind of been shed off of it. So here we can actually see <clears throat> some granitic rocks that have intruded into these metamorphic rocks. You can actually see there's blobs uh, of the metamorphic rock inside this granite. And so the magma has intruded into these rocks to form uh, granite in places. Uh, in other places, we can see up here somewhere, uh, the rock is a little bit darker. 
And so this is probably better called uh, a diorite in here. Here's another one that's a little better. So this sort of black and white speckled <coughs> rock in here is a, a diorite. So this is a magma intrusive uh, igneous rock, magma cooling and crystallizing, but having a little bit more iron magnesium to make more of these dark colored crystals in here, making it a little bit darker. Um, <coughs> the other thing we can see up here is a lot of the middle plate of the, between the detachment fault has a lot of quartzite. So a lot of these lighter colored uh, kind of beige rocks here. These are quartzites, really hard, durable quartzites. These were once sandstones that have been um, metamorphosed so that the sand grains have sort of fused together. Uh, what else do we have up here? It looks like we have some some schists. <clears throat> so you can see these very sparkly mica crystals in here. So we have some metamorphic rocks, some schists as well. So we've got marble, schists, quartzites, uh, and some other rock types in here as well. And this is all in float, so all this is outcropping up here uh, on the mountainside. And then the bedrock back here by these, these acres here, we have this banded <coughs> marble um, that formed as well in the middle plate. So uh, just kind of a quick look there. This here we're looking over at, uh, at Cobb Peak. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit to the shadows. Uh, but you can see a lot of lines running through that mountain face there. Those are, I think those are dikes. I'm not sure. I haven't got over there, but those look like uh, dikes of different material cutting through the these quartzites and marbles here. This is all middle plate all the way up to the ridge line. If you go just past the ridge line, you should get into more of these um, intrusive igneous rocks and then into the, the lower plate. If we look down into this smoky haze to the west, uh, probably past these hills here, we get down into the upper plate, which are the unmetamorphosed um, rocks. So it's a lot to take in. It's kind of a complicated subject. The pioneers are an incredibly complex mountain range, lots of different rock types, um, a really complicated history of compression and then extension and metamorphism, faulting. Uh, and then it was all sculpted and um, exposed by glaciers during the last ice age. And so we've got these beautiful cirques. Uh, this is exactly the pathway the glaciers took through this, this hilly terrain, kind of in this broad U-shaped canyon here. We're a little over 10,000 feet, I believe. Um, and then down into the valley there. So we'll do maybe another video or two from the pioneers, but just wanted to acquaint you with metamorphic core complexes and this part of the, the Pioneer Mountains in central Idaho.